Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated. Um, my company buys thousands of broken MacBooks a year and refurbishes them, repairs them, and sells them wholesale. Um, but Apple is becoming less viable of a product for a number of reasons. So I've turned to retro computers as sort of an, uh, a way to diversify. And um, MacBooks, you know, I, I get lots of MacBooks in, but they're not real interesting to unbox. They tend to be kind of all the same. Um, but it turns out this retro uh, stuff is just off the charts interesting uh, to unbox. Just, just You get people's whole collections of hundreds of small items, and it's just really, really interesting. So this lot certainly is going to be a, uh, a ton of fun. Uh, it's from a guy who lived in Australia, and he took all of this to the U.S., and then he sold it to me. So supposedly lots of computers in here, lots of accessories, lots of goofy stuff. So um, yeah, let's get going. What I'm going to do is unbox uh, one of the six boxes at a time off camera so you don't have to suffer through watching me deal with bubble wrap and all of that stuff. And, I'll, and then I'll show you what, uh, what is in each box and then I'll move on to the next one. So here we go. Here's box number one. All right, so first box, right off the bat, we have a really interesting uh, system here. Commodore VIC-20, an expandable computer system for family businesses and educational use. Uh, Got to get a kick out of these uh, images here. Uh, this was actually my first computer, so uh, it's uh, going to be fun to have one of these again. Uh, seriously yellowed, you can see. Um, might have to try my hand at retro brighting. Um, it's almost like a glowing neon yellow. It's, it's uh, interesting. Um, and then no power adapter. Hopefully we'll run across one of those soon in the other boxes. I guess this is a composite video uh, adapter. And then there's something here that goes from composite to... Is that coax? I don't know what that is. But uh, anyway, we'll see. But uh, very cool to get a VIC-20 in an original box. Uh, amazing that the box oh, with sound and music. Uh, cool. Um, supposedly, a lot of these systems are PAL because they came from Australia. So I don't even know what that means in terms of the old computers. Uh, I, I know what it means in terms of uh, Amigas, but not, not, not VIC-20s necessarily. $10. So Anyway, so that's box one. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so box two is looking really interesting. Uh, first off, a ton of uh, floppy disks. I think these are Commodore 64. Well, yeah, 64C. Um, just various stuff. Geos, uh, remember that? It was sort of a graphical OS for the 64 and 128. Uh, just, you know, lots of various old crap. Disks in not too great a condition. A lot of them probably don't work. Um, it's amazing. They, they get kind of soiled with this... I, I don't know what it is. I think it's maybe the glue for the stickers just seeps through the labels or something. Uh, so Karatika, obviously a classic. Bard's Tale, spent a ton of time with that game as a kid. Yeah, what was this one? Demo Disc. Just lots of stuff. It's funny because, you know, I, I, you think back to your childhood and it felt like what we were doing was pretty original, but then you, you know, you go through other people's collections and it's like all the same stuff. So we were all doing the same thing, playing all the same games. It's, it's kind of funny. You just find the same games in every, every lot. Uh, so here we have an Amiga 500, uh, in good shape. Uh, as far as I can tell, it, um, had an A501, the 512K uh, expansion that goes on the underside. Uh, the shielding is off. Usually there's a metal shielding on these. Um, the battery has some corrosion, but it's not terrible. So this is probably salvageable. I'll rip the battery off and this will probably uh, be a working RAM expansion. I don't know why they took the shielding off, but then didn't remove the battery. That's kind of odd. Uh, so there's that. Um, the 500, it's kind of frightening. It has some, uh, makes some sounds when you um, turn it. There's obviously some stuff inside it. Uh, it feels a little heavy, like a little heavier than a, a normal 500. Uh, so 
you know, I don't know, maybe there's a, uh, an accelerator or something that came loose and is bouncing around in there. Uh, hopefully it's not destroyed. So here we have some VIC-20 cartridges, um, some classic games. Gorf, uh, that was one of my first games. I actually met the creator of Gorf at a glitch art show a few years ago, which was pretty cool. Um, so these are strange. These are uh, PC floppy disks, uh, shareware, Wolf 3D shareware edition. Um, I've never seen uh, games in this this sort of format. These little uh, little boxes. Maybe it's something from Australia that's specific to uh, to there. I don't know. Here are some tapes, tape games. Um, I had a I had a tape drive for my Vic 20, but I only really had a couple games. Uh, but I'm realizing buying all these lots that. Uh, tape was a popular medium uh, back in the day. Maybe it was slightly before me or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, a lot of people had hundreds of tapes, which is which is pretty crazy. And then here we have uh, three tape units. The 1530, two of them. And then this one, which I assume was probably for the C16 or the Plus 4, because it's got this uh, almost like an S-Video uh, cable. Uh, and it's, you know, darker colored, obviously. So yeah, so I've got redundant uh, tape drives. This one appears to be broken, the cover's off. Um, yeah, these don't go for much. These are, you know, worth 10 bucks each, basically. But now I have three of them. So uh, yeah, interesting box of stuff, and we'll move on. All right, so box number three, got some stuff here. Some old boxes for the games. There's the Gorf box. Not in great shape. I know some people really collect the original boxes. Um, you know, I remember buying games in, at uh, Toys R Us as a kid and immediately threw away all the boxes, but we'll see if anyone cares enough about these boxes to want them. So here's a 1541-2 disk drive. Uh, Little tiny drive, much smaller than the 1541. Um, we'll see if it works. I guess this uh, was for the 64C. So, lots of books. Start playing keyboard. Oh, there's the manual for the uh, tape drive. That's good. I, I've learned buying these lots that you just get so many of these books. The Financial Advisor. using the 64. 64 exposed. Oh good, I have a manual for Geos. Exciting games for the 64. Not just not just games, but you can write exciting games. So there's that. Here's just some more stuff, just various manuals and whatever. And then here's the printer. MPS 1200 Commodore. Never had one of these back in the day. Dot matrix printer. I, I don't really want to refurbish vintage printers. I, I think that's just one step too far for me. Um, I don't know, maybe someone will be interested in this though. It's, it's hard to say. Looks like it's in good shape. There it is. So I guess we have an alternate cover for it. Probably, I assume these come out. And then here we have a ribbon. So even comes with a ribbon. Um, probably dried up. I, I would I would venture to guess it's probably dried up after 30 years or whatever. So here we have a bunch of cables. These are crazy cables. I, I guess it's a European thing. I, I think I think they're video cables because this one has the composite plugs on this end and then you know one of these monster things on this end. So that's a, that's a crazy cable. Um, more you know TV hookup kind of kind of stuff. This is kind of cool. Um, plugs into the computer on one end, and then you have, you know, these on the other end, so you can uh, add an extension cable. Then another one of these guys, the composite uh, boxes, it looks like. It's got a Commodore sticker. It's kind of cool. More cables. And then here's a power cable for the printer. Obviously, it's got, like, the uh, non-US plug, which I can't use at all. So, um... These things are so big. It's always crazy to see them. 
So yeah, so that's box number three, so we'll move on. All right, so in this box we have two Commodore 64s, both varieties. Uh, the 64C, I think this was, was called. Um, unfortunately, it makes a little noise when you move it around. It's not doing it now, but, and the screws are removed, which is uh, not good. Uh, we'll see if this power's on. Um, yeah, I've really had a problem with this retro stuff of it getting damaged in shipping. People just don't know what they're doing. Uh, th this stuff was shipped pretty well, but uh, seriously, I've had like a third of the computers come in just destroyed because people don't know what they're doing. Plus, the stuff is extra fragile, and, and they, they I don't think they realize it has any value, so they just throw it in a box. Very depressing. But anyway, here's the uh, bread bin 64, I've learned it's called. Um, it's funny, you, you hear these terms, you know, you didn't know in 1980, whatever, that this was a bread bin, but now you do, um, now that we're on the internet and all talking. So this is a distinctly different uh, sound to the keyboard than other 64s I have. It's very noisy, the keys don't uh, have any softness to them, uh, so it's, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a cheaper keyboard or maybe it was taken out and put back in badly, hard to say. But uh, anyway, yeah, there's a 64. So here's a, uh, an Amiga mouse, uh, another term, this is a tank mouse, uh, that's what this is called. Again, didn't know back in the day this was called the tank mouse. Um, kind of messy, but you know, hopefully it'll clean up. These are worth a lot of money. I see these listed for like $50, $70, pretty crazy. Um, yeah, and these are called wedge computers, the computers that are this kind of shape. That's, you know, another thing I didn't realize. So here's a cable. Pins are missing from the cable. That's that's kind of sad. Here we have some more tape games by Ocean. Ooh. So don't know if anyone's going to care about those. So here we have the Commodore Music Maker. Um, yeah, move over, Korg and Yamaha. Here's the, the the Commodore Music Maker, and unfortunately, it looks a little damaged. Yeah, it's not. Not too substantial, but you know, there you go. I think I have the manual somewhere too, and the software. Floppy drive user guide, a bizarre adapter here, more cables. Here's the Amiga um, power supply. It's one of the heavy ones. It, it's kind of interesting. Some of them are super heavy, and some of them are so light they feel like they're empty. Um, not sure why that is, but um, unfortunately this has the uh, non-US plug again and it's not something you can disconnect from the box. So when I bought this lot, I didn't really think too hard about the whole PAL European thing, but yeah, unfortunately I'm not gonna get any good power adapters out of this. Um, have to put this on eBay, see if anyone wants this uh, non-US uh, power brick. So anyway, on to the next box. All right, next to the last box, uh, we have a collection of joysticks here. I'm sure my fiance will be thrilled to hear that we have 20 more joysticks than I had before around the house. Um, so some that I recognize, some that I don't. Uh, the Commodore paddles here. This is a strange one. Radio Shack, this little compact thing. Uh, these are interesting, never seen these. It's almost like a jet fighter cockpit joystick. Two of those. Uh, the Wicko Boss, this was always my favorite. I've got a few of those. This one, kind of elaborate. This is an Atari. Looks like a precursor to sort of like the Nintendo uh, handsets. Um, and then uh, this is just a classic Commodore. This one's pretty elaborate too. Uh, professional computer joystick system. It does have a feel sort of like a, a stand-up arcade game, so maybe that's what they're going for here. Uh, and then we have disk drives. We have a disk drive for each of the uh, C64s. Unfortunately, they both make rattling noises when you move them around, which is not good. And then we have some Amiga discs. Not really much in the way of uh, oh, Street Fighter II. Um, mostly copied games. And then we have two more power adapters for the, the uh, floppy drives, neither of which I can use because they're the wrong adapter type. And this one appears to be damaged. 
that doesn't look like a pin configuration that is valid. I don't know why anyone would damage that. It's kind of strange. I guess they tried to jam it into the wrong hole. So yeah. All right, on to the next box. Actually, the last box. Okay, we're down to the final box, and we've got lots of software. So uh, I, I seem to be accumulating every kind of retro floppy disk and cassette uh, storage system with the fake wood here. This is full of cassettes, uh, Munt Mania, uh, Wall Street, Westminster. I have no idea what these are. These seem to be jammed. I can't open them any further. I'll have to work on that. Some floppies. Uh, my life is complete now. I have blasteroids. Um, let's see what that looks like. Um, more floppy disks. I won't go into those. Some boxes. Um, introduction to basic. Yeah. Some of these are in okay shape. There's a fast load cartridge in here, and this is very nice, so maybe someone will, maybe a collector will, will want this. And um, yeah, so we've got some manuals, for the computers, floppy drives, whoever gets the printer will like this, and some more boxes. Tales of Lore, that sounds familiar. Maybe someone will care enough to want this. And then we have a pile of cartridges, 64 cartridges, I assume. So, Zenji, Lazarian, Magic Desk. I assume most of these are, oh, these are blank. That's strange. Maybe it's programmable. Financial Advisor, Avenger. I think most of these are pretty typical. Music Machine, I probably have five music machines. Another blank one. Kickman, Radar Rat Race. I have a million of those. Oh, Simon's Basic. It's sort of like an improved version of Basic. International Soccer. Pastfinder. It's a strange looking cartridge. Donkey Kong. Pitfall. More International Soccer. You can play International Soccer all day. Super Games. Five dollars. Peter Lander. Clowns, visible solar system, the designer's pencil, an art cartridge, jungle hunt, wizard of war, easy calc result. So financial advisor and easy calc result. It's almost tax time. I'll have to do research and figure out which one of these I should use for my taxes. So anyway, there is the last box. And I will sum up here in a second with uh, a picture of everything together. All right, so here we are at the end. Unboxing complete. Here it all is at once. God, what am I going to do with all this crap? Ugh, just kidding. Um, yeah, but there's some good stuff here. There's some not so good stuff here. Uh, will be interesting to see how the computers turn out. Hopefully they actually work. Um, if there's anything here that you want that, you know, if I found anything that you've been looking for, let me know. Most likely I'd let it go at a reasonable price and, uh, I'll be doing more, uh, retro videos in the future. Uh, cause it's always, you know, bizarre and interesting to open boxes of this stuff and I get so much of it. So there will be more content coming. So that's, that's it pretty much. Thanks for watching. Um, Hope you found this interesting and I'll talk to you soon.